So uh, my name is Jimmy, and I'm from QUT, Queensland University of Technology from Brisbane. And um, also on the side, I work in an app company called Eat More Pixels, together with Zach at the back and also Tony. Um, so the three of us kind of work on um, some contract um, building apps or um, making apps for different companies. So um, today I'll be talking about, uh, oh, before that, I need to uh, give you some warning. So this presentation might contain a lot of Anvil animations. Um, if you are not happy or if you feel uncomfortable during the presentation, please contact Tony Gray. If you uh, enjoy it, please also contact Tony. And uh, don't email me. And please consider attending Devo again. All right, so let's get straight into it. So this presentation, I'll be talking to you about picking the right models for making your app videos. So um, Apple recently added you know, video um, preview to your app um, on the App Store. And it's important that you pick the right model so you achieve the maximum benefit of showing video to your clients. No. That's not this is about. Uh, we'll be talking about um, an app design architecture. So uh, a lot of us are quite familiar with model view controller, which is pretty much the de facto kind of um, design paradigm that Apple kind of kind of taught us and recommended to us in their documentation. Um, but as you'll see later on in a little bit, that it has certain issues. And so f recently, I've been thinking about it. So like, what are the other kind of um, design pattern we can apply or different kind of design um, in terms of architecture? How do you make it? Uh, how do you get rid of those issues? Or how do you get around those issues? So this presentation will be quite abstract in terms of like we'll be discussing about how models and view and view controller kind of work hand in hand and how we can make changes to how they interact with each other in order to, to better design your app. OK. So let's start with um, what we all know, so just to get everyone kind of up to the same page. So Model View Controller, MVC, um, it's been around for a long time. Um, and honestly, that's how I learned to program um, iOS apps and Mac apps, right? Like, that's, that's what's been documented, and that's what all the textbooks are teaching. Um, and People even, you know, have songs about it. You know, if you if you haven't, um, if you don't know about, it, there's actually a model view controller song by these guys called James Demsey and the Breakpoints. They're great guys. Um, they have great songs um, about Mac or iOS related, like development related um, topics. So they've got one, you know, about Marin Lakes. They've got one about um, MVC and all the others. Great, great guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one, actually. Yeah. OK, so uh, back to MVC, right? So let's, let's talk about um, these three components in a little bit more detail. So, um, so tell me about model. Like, what is model? Or what's your understanding of a model? Right? So model is dealing with data, right? So how, sorry, yeah? How you access the data, yeah? Anyone else? Objects. Yeah, usually they are represented with objects. Um, so, yeah, sorry? Validation. Yeah, how do you do So data validations, um, checking whether the data is valid and stuff. States. Yeah, you could use that to represent states in um, using the objects, yeah. Um, so it's, it's mainly dealing with how uh, data is represented in your app. And how do you model the data? And how do you store the data? So this is what uh, model is about. And what about view? Like it's, it's quite apparent. So view is how you present those data, or how do you present those information to your user. And view is also kind of the window how your user interact with your data, right? So this is kind of um, how things are presented and how people visualize it, and how people interact with it. That's all well and good. But then you go into view controller. So view controller, this, um, the text down here below says, a controller object acts as the intermediary between the application's view objects 
and its model objects. This is the definition given by Apple. It's in the documentation. What this means actually is anything that is not a model and not a view, right? Like if anything else, everything else goes into controller. And that's, that's fine. I mean, usually that's what we do actually. So like all the programming logic tends to go into your controller. But over time, that seems to have this behavior or this issue that your controller tend to get really big. Like we see that a lot actually in, even in my own code, usually the view class might have say 20 lines, your model maybe 20, 30 lines, and your controller it's like you count it in hundreds, right? Because it just does so many things. Everything goes into, so like loading the views, positioning it, um, interaction with the users, all of that goes into your controller. Um, so that introduced a lot of issues. So for one, it's quite hard to navigate. And for the second point is, if there is a bug in your controller logic, it's quite hard to find out what went wrong where, right? Because it's too big and it, it gets quite unwieldy. That's, that's the whole point of it. Um, also, we've got this problem with network logic and this has become uh, more and more often because a lot of apps now talk to, say, another web service API or it talks to PaaS or to, to CloudKit. So whenever you have some kind of network connection, um, you need to put the network logic code somewhere. And usually they ended up going into your controller code because, I mean, that's where everything else goes, right? So, uh, and this kind of introduced this kind of awkward network logic placement where they usually you know ended up in your controller in your controller file so that's not good and we need to think about a way to to solve this problem as well the third issue we have is about unit testing so I'm gonna be honest here that uh, a lot of our testing happened when we finished building the app so like when the app is fully functional and then we actually launch the app and then we try to play around with it and try to break it. That's usually how testing work um, when we're building an app. And that's okay, but there are certain times where we think we could do better than that. So part of the reason why we don't do testing while we were writing the code is because it's quite difficult to test your controller code because your controller does so many things, right? So like your controller is basically the glue code that makes everything work. It, it creates the view, it positions the views, it handles the interaction with the views. So just that, it makes it difficult to test your controller code because how do you test your logic without messing with all the other views? And if you're testing for your UI, then you might not want to test your, your data storage thing as well. So it, it just makes testing very difficult. Like you can't test how your data storage work without launching it with the full view um, being allocated and displayed. So it, it makes testing, testing very difficult. So we've got all these issues with, with MVC. And these guys, the, uh, the models, uh, are not going to help you. Instead, we're going to rely on um, something that um, I just learned recently. It's called MVVM. So model view, view model is, is the name of it. So uh, what is it, actually? So if you look at uh, our current sort of app architecture, you have your model, your controller, and your view. So your controller usually sits in the middle because it owns pretty much everything, and everything kind of talks to it. So you can see why controller has so many, like, so many lines of code and why, it's, why it is so complex. But with MVVM, or model view view model, what we're going to introduce is we're not going to kill off controller, as the name has suggested, but instead we're going to add a new component to the app. It's called a view model. And um, what that would change in terms of interaction between each component in, within your app, um, it would change it to something like this. So straight away you can see how information flows um, within your app. It becomes more... Uh, I would say 
logical and sort of everyone has, uh, everyone just kind of talk to their neighbors. So a model would talk directly to view model and view model would talk directly to controller and controller would still handle the view um, as it's supposed to because it's a view controller. So um, let's look at all these interactions in more details. So to help me with my explanation, I am going to use an example. So say if you're making a, a note-taking application, a notes app, right? So let's talk about all these different components we have in the note app. Okay, so it's a note app, so we will have a whole bunch of notes. So it's quite reasonable to have a class called note that handles um, all the text. So for example, your note class might have a string that represents the text of the note, and it might have a date that um, kind of saved when the note is uh, modified. Uh, so in terms of your app architecture, you might have, say, a list view controller. So it's a typical kind of table view controller. It allows you to browse through a list of all your notes, maybe displaying a snippet of what the note contained and also the date when that note is uh, modified, for example. And also, if you need to drill down into one particular note because you need to modify it, or you want to read the full text that's contained within uh, that particular note, then we, we usually have a detail view controller. So that gives you the full detail contained in that note, um, in that, in that note object. So what, view, uh, what the view model uh, paradigm kind of adds to this is for every view controller or every view in your app, we kind of have a corresponding view model object. So in here, I'm just going to call it list view model for the list view controller. And then there's a detail view model for the detail view controller. Uh, a, a simplified way to think about view model is it handles all the, all the uh, massaging from your data model to your presentation. So for example, the idea is um, to make everything very simple for your view object. Um, let's say you're displaying the modified date on your, on, your, um, on your note view, say on your detail view. What you do in your, in your detail view model is you have, it, um, you have a, a function that turns an NS date object into a plain NS string. So the view only handles displaying stuff that it's being given to. So if the view is given a string, it would display it on the label. And if it's, if it's given an image, it would just display it. So the view becomes very kind of dumb, but it's, it's only displaying what it's been given. And it doesn't manipulate it or it doesn't do any complex operation on it. The idea of doing that is because then you can test your view model without creating the, uh, the view itself. So the, creating the view and testing it becomes very expensive. And by doing so, um, you can test your data model by using a view model very quickly. And because you make your view so simple, it, there's less chance for you to make mistakes when you are um, dealing with passing data around different objects as well. So that's, that's the whole idea. So in terms of actual kind of methods that's used, so I'm gonna give you some examples here. So for example, in our, in our model, we have a node and then in our, say in our list, uh, so in our view model that handles uh, talking to the model directly, we might have something that say save onto the database or load from the database a series of uh, node objects. But what's more interesting is say in your view controller, you have a corresponding view model um, for that particular controller. So for example, for my list view controller, I might have a view model that has method that says create node at index path, and then remove node at index path. And you know, for every single cell um, in the table view, I might have something that gives out a string. So node title for index path, or date string for index path. So at no point my view controller is grabbing or is talking directly to a node object. Everything that it needs to display on the screen is being handled or is being passed through the view model, and the view model gives it straight um, simple objects such as an NS string or an image 
any, uh, any, anything that can be displayed directly. So the controller doesn't do all the manipulation. It only say, I grab what I want from the view model and I'm gonna display, I'm gonna pass it on to say the view to display. That's the idea. And view model will actually do the transformation between the data types. So that's, that's the, gist, the gist of it. So similarly in your, uh, in your detail view controller, so you might have things like, um, I want the actual note text, but it being attributed so you can have different word style. Or you, if you have a word count string, so see word count can actually be, uh, can actually be a number, but uh, in order, like I said, in order to make everything simple for the view and for the controller, you're going to, you're going to actually return a string that can be displayed directly um, as a, as a, on a label, as a text. And also, if the view is updated, you can call the uh, view model to say update note with the new piece of text, and view model will handle everything else, so such as updating the numbers and updating the date and et cetera. Uh, the actual transformation goes into the view model, but if you have some data validation and all that stuff, that still goes into your, uh, your model objects as before. Yeah. So this is, um, you can think about the view model as a way to take responsibility out from your controller and encapsulate it in a, a new component that mainly does data type transformation um, and also making sure you only kind of just output things that is absolutely needed for your view. And your controller mainly just say, hey, view model, I need something to pass on to the view. And then the view model will say, yep, go, this is a string or this is an image. And then the controller will just say, yep, pass it on to the view, and that's it. So your controller then becomes mostly like a, I don't know, a conductor in an in a orchestra, it just say, tells everyone to do what. But itself, the controller itself doesn't do much in terms of transformation or manipulations. So, so the view model is effectively um, abstracting your own custom stuff back to the standard um, you know, UI kit or yes. you can see object strings. And yes. Things yeah. Things yeah. So this, um, and also a lot of your networking code can go into the um, the view model as well, depending on where what they're doing, because if they're if they're changing the information depending on what's grabbed on by the data, uh, what's grabbed from the network, then those would go into the view model as well. And likewise, if your if your model is constantly changing because of networks can uh, because of network data, then your model object would notify the view model, and then the view model would then tell the associated view controller, hey, you need to update because I have new stuff to pass on to you, right? It's, it's something that's, that I just recently learned and it's, it's, I, I, I think it has some potential in simplifying how we design the code, so it's, it's worthwhile looking in, um, deeper into it as well. And um, yeah, so this is what I've talked about in the view. If the view has any update, um, so for example, in text view did change, it will tell the controller and then the controller would just pass it on to your view model, that's it. it the, the controller itself doesn't do anything to the, to the text that's, that's passed on by the, by the view. Okay, so uh, a quick demo of what I've shown you. I've actually made this into an actual app and I wanted to show you how it, it works in terms of code. All right, so this might be hard to read and hear, but I might start with the storyboard. So you can see the storyboard is a very simple kind of uh, master and detail view. I have a table view here that shows me a list of notes. Um, notes has a title and a subtitle string that shows the modification date. And and the detail view just shows a list of all the notes. And the title actually tells you how many words I have in that piece of text. So in terms of my app um, architecture com um, components, I have my note class. 
So a note class has modified date as a date object. It has note text as a string. Um, it has something for uh, so like dictionary representation and initialization for saving and restoring. Um, so if you look at my list view controller, it is just a standard UI table view controller, except it has a property now called the list view model. So uh, the list view controller is a pretty stock standard kind of controller. Um, it does what a controller usually do. And it handles all the um, interaction callbacks as well. So like table view, self, or row at index path, and you know, when can edit, the uh, delete, you know, uh, moving around, things like that. What's interesting is the view model, the list view model. So the list view model actually takes care of um, telling the view controller what it needs to show up on the screen. So this is important when you're designing your uh, list view model. So it needs to have all the, all the information it needs to tell the controller what it needs to show. So internally, it has an array of nodes. It also has a number that shows what is the currently selected node, because the, v the view controller needs that information to tell the detailed view controller what to show up uh, when it's presenting. So like I've said, you have a method that uh, the view controller will then call on this view model. It's, so for example, when you're creating a new node, when you're deleting a node, or um, when you're showing the cell, you need a title and you have a date string. So date aren't passed around at all to the, to the view controller. Instead, you transform it to the right format and then you pass it along. So this is super easy for testing now because all you're testing is just a string comparison, not an actual date object, right? OK. Um, and likewise, I have my detail view controller. Detail view controller is super simple. It has a UI text view. Um, it has a corresponding detail view model, which I will show you now. So uh, detail view model has a couple of, so it needs a node uh, object to, sh to actually grab the data that it needs to show in the detail view. It also has a parent which um, I need in order to, to do the saving and, and loading um, if anything is changed within this view. It has a couple of um, method that is used by the view controller. So note text that gives it the, the string, the word count string uh, that gives it a count, uh, the word count in terms of, a, of an NS string object. And whenever the text is changed, uh, the view controller will call this method on the view model. So if I go into the implementation of this file, you can see this is not that big, but it handles like the transformation. So the word count actually is a function that runs through my text and then do the, the word count. And then um, so I can use it when I'm generating my word count string. So the, the transformation is done within this detail view model class. So, okay, so if I run that, you see what this creates. If my simulator shows up. Hey. Cool. So pretty standard uh, table view. Um, you can create a new node by pressing the top right corner. It creates the node with some default text. Um, you can keep adding nodes. You can also edit them. So you can delete, delete them, press done, and delete them like this. So pretty standard. and. Um, so it does all everything that you know we've expected it to do. This is the note title, and underneath the title we have the modification date for it. And if you go into one of these note objects, it goes into a detail view, right? So you can see the, the word count at, as the title of the view controller up here. But if you changed it, you can see how the, um, 
things is updated live as we're typing. Um, so let's, uh, here's to the crazy ones, All right? So um, everything kind of works. Um, so you can jump into a different node. And um, by the way, there's another good thing that um, when you are implementing your app using a view model is because now all the view controllers are driven by uh, essentially a, mo a view model that covers everything, every information that the controller needs. What, give, what that gives you is a really nice way to do app restoration. I'll show you what I mean. So if I'm in this detail view controller now, and if, I, if this app for some reason got killed, and if I launch it again, it will, it will restore back to right where it was. So including the view hierarchies, where things are selected, um, and what view controller is presented. Because um, everything that the view controller is needed is now um, res represented using a view model. And if your app saves those view models when, when before anything, before the app is killed or um, whenever anything is changed, then literally you get this app restoration feature for free, right? Any, what all you need to do is just to repopulate it, read it off the file, repopulate all the properties, and then when a view controller is initialized, they read it from the view model and then and does everything that it needs to do. So this is a, another sort of a side benefits of doing it the MVVM way. So yeah, that's my demo. So going back to the keynote. Okay, so I, I hope I've shown you um, how the the model view controller has some issues and how this new model of, of having a view model in addition to your controller can kind of simplify your controller code and also make your, your app more flexible. Um, because if you think about it, if you're moving your app, say, to a different platform or to a different device, say, from an iPhone to an iPad or to the Mac, a lot of these things can be reused. So your model can definitely be reused and your view model can also be reused because it is just um, transforming it into a string object or a UI image. And the same thing can be taken across to a different platform quite easily. Um, yeah. So, oops. There's a couple of uh, notes about MVVM. It is compatible with your current sort of MVC architecture. You just need to kind of take code out from your controller logic and then move them on or abstract them into uh, the view model class. Um, it definitely makes your apps more testable. I don't have time to go into the detail, but it, it should be pretty apparent because we make the interface very simple. They are just basic um, NS objects. Uh, also, MVVM works best with a binding mechanism because of how it interacts with the data. So you want a way for you for you to easily specify, update this model when there's a change to this data, or update this view model when there's a change to this view, when the user kind of adds a text or manipulate the image. And to do that, um, I, I was, while during my exploration, I was mainly using um, like pretty stock standard Apple way, so using the delegates and using the callbacks that we get. But people are, are starting to experiment this using Reactive Coco or KVO. Um, I, I didn't actually explore them, but apparently Reactive Coco works really well. Um, it's worth um, digging into this if you're, if you're thinking to do MVVM. Um, but for me, I'm a little bit inclined to use like the party libraries, mainly because uh, there might be bugs and when this um, iOS updates, I might need to update it. Um, so I tend to stick with what Apple's provided. So KVO notifications or delegates um, will also work as well. So you don't have to use the third party libraries. It's, it's mainly how you structure your app. So this is a, a, this is a way to think about structuring your, your app's architecture. Um, yeah, so I've included some further readings. Um, and these are like some of the useful blog posts or um, 
websites that talks about MVVM. Uh, in particular, the first link is a newsletter that is called objc.io. It's an Objective-C related newsletter. It is very useful. It usually talks about uh, what are the common issues or what are the new kind of advancement in terms of programming um, in Objective-C and Swift recently. Um, so it might be worthwhile to check, check it out. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>